Hey you guys, God bless all of you. Welcome to Mike Creed Outdoors. Hope you had a great Easter. This morning you guys, I'm going to go to the mountains. You can see behind me, this is my woodshed. And I have got a wood cutting permit here in the state of Virginia that you can cut in the National Forest. For 20 bucks guys, you can cut six cords of wood in the state of Virginia in the National Forest. That's dry wood. So go with me this morning to fill this, to keep on uh, cutting some wood to fill this thing up. So. All right, you guys, got my chainsaw. I got one of these little old steel guys, MS-180Cs. I bought that thing a couple of years ago. It's a very light chainsaw, but I tell you what, it does a really good job. That's what I used to cut my firewood with. I'm going to take uh, some bar oil, you guys. What I use is, is automatic transmission fluid. It, it's a whole lot thinner, but it takes a whole lot more heat off of a chain than just regular old oil does. I've got a screwdriver. I've got a file to file my saw with if I hit a rock. And of course, I've got some extra fuel. Pretty good, you guys. Nice load of guys. This is solid red oak right here. This is really good wood. It's seasoned, it's been standing there. Hard to tell how long dead. And that's what makes it good wood. But now, guys, I'm going down here and show you how to sharpen your saw in the woods. Because when you're cutting this kind of stuff right here, when it's dead, it's going to dull your saw really quick. 
And one of the ways that you know that your saw is dull, of course, is it's not, it's not, you know, burying itself in the wood the way it's supposed to. Also, it'll start cut. Maybe start cutting in a curve where some of them teeth's getting dull. So just for the, the uh, simplicity of this video, guys, we're going to sharpen my saw and I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, you guys, that tree that I just cut down right there was almost, I'm going to say it was about 30 feet tall. And I've cut the, most of the big part of it up and already loaded up in the truck. But when you're out here in the forest, guys, you, don't, you won't have a vise unless you've got one mounted on the back of your truck. You won't have a vise to uh, put your saw in. And, you know, that's one of the ways that I do it. But here's the way you do it. You cradle that thing between your legs, just like that right there. You lean that saw over. You simply file them teeth, just like that. And out here in the woods, guys, when you're doing it this way, you can see the angle really good. And you can also see the edge of your tooth get sharp. When it's down this way, you can't really see that. But when your saw is turned up like this right here, that's the way you do it. So easy to do. Make sure you do guys have a pair of gloves on because you can cut the end of your finger really bad with your hand on, on these really sharp teeth. And, and you can tell dull teeth because when you start that file in there guys, it'll drag really bad until you smooth that rough edge out. And I've cut guys more Let's see, I think this one, this particular chain, guys, I've got almost, this will make uh, almost 18 loads of wood I've cut with it. And we're back to the front there. Simply turn the thing around, just like that. You can really see the angle when you've got your saw turned that direction. There's nothing, guys, more frustrating than being out here in the woods without a file and you hit a rock or your saw gets dull and you haven't finished what you was trying to do. And you've either got to quit and go back and get you a file, whatever. And one more thing, you guys. I know people who do not notch trees to get them to fall. You seen me take that notch out of that tree. And that tree was standing straight up. I didn't have to touch it. It actually fell right into that notch right there. So you see how I done that? If you don't, guys, uh, this, this tree can, as it starts to fall, when it doesn't have this notch to fall into, it can bind your saw up for one thing while you're still trying to get it cut off. And, you know, a saw can get bound up anyway, even if you notch the tree, if the wind or something blows, or you don't have everything just exactly right. And I carry a wedge for that purpose. But you can see how I slanted that cut, and the weight of that tree then went into this notch right here, and it fell. If you don't do that, you're, sometimes your tree will just fall over and split. The whole tree will just split straight up and then kick backwards. And... We call that jackknifing or uh, barber chairing is what we used to call it back in the old days. If a ch it, That can come back and hit you and kill you. And I've heard of incidents happen and know an incident of it happening. It didn't kill the man, but it come back and hit him in the top of the shin and then split that shin all the way down to his foot. So always notch your trees, you guys, so that they fall in the direction that you're trying to make the thing fall in.
Well, that was fun, wasn't it, you guys? Let me unload this right here and I'll show you what it looks like after I unload it. So guys, I hope you learned something from this video. I know that there's lots of you people out there that already know how to cut firewood. There's beginners that don't know how, and that's why I'm here. I'm not here to be a know-it-all, you guys, and to uh, try to tell you people who already know how to do this stuff how to do it. That, that's not my thing. But if you're a beginner and a young person and you need some assistance or help, that's what I'm here for. Thank you for watching my videos, and once again, God bless you. Have yourself a great day.